Lou here. Now, if you don't know, I absolutely love horror. It's part of the reason Halloween is one of my favorite times of the year. And with that, I thought I'd review another classic horror game this year. This time, I'm reviewing Franbo by Vote From You Guys. Roll that intro and let's get started. <laughs> Before I begin this review, please note that Frambo is not like Five Nights at Freddy's or Eve where the horror is less apparent. Frambo tackles themes of mental illness and severe amounts of gore. So if something like this can trigger a mental breakdown for you, then I really don't recommend you watch this video or play the game at all all. Mental health comes first and it's not a good idea for anyone with mental triggers to be watching something or playing something that will trigger them. I say this because I know this game is very easy to trigger someone. I've actually known someone who literally could not play this game due to their own mental issues. So with that, let's start the review. Franbo was created by the Finnish game company Kill Monday and released on August 27th, 2015 to overwhelmingly positive positive reviews with good reason because this game truly is amazing. The game is currently on PC, Android, Apple, and GOG. Given this is a point and click adventure game relying on heavy use of a mouse and just clicking things in general, there seems to be no plans for PS4 or other consoles. Though knowing the Switch, they're most likely to make it happen. Putting Franbo on the Switch is just a joke by the way because everything's getting ported over to the Switch. So yeah, I really don't think Fran Bo will get ported to the Switch, but who the hell knows at this point? Fran Bo and Kill Monday's other game, Little Miss Fortune, are the only official games Kill Monday has made, by the way. So Fran Bo is their first official game and was for quite a number of years before Little Miss Fortune. <laughs> Franbo is a 10 year old girl whose parents were brutally murdered. She knows a creature or someone murdered her parents, but she ran out of the house before whoever killed her parents would kill her too. She passed out close to a mental asylum where her aunt took her there and Fran is currently being treated for a mental illness. Now the game does not explain what Fran has, though she apparently showed signs of psychosis. I'm not gonna pretend to be a super high level expert on mental health, but I'm going based on my own research for this video and in the past for fictional writing purposes that Fran likely has schizophrenia. Obviously don't take this as fact, all we know is Fran does have a mental disorder since the game's description mentions she is struggling with one. Anyway, she's in a hospital where she plans to escape to reunite with her beloved cat and aunt so she can go home and live a happy normal life again. All this changes when a dark and evil demon thing tells her he will stop her from achieving happiness by any means. Gee, if this isn't symbolism for depression, I don't know what is. She travels across different realities, though we as an audience can view these as psychosis episodes one after another, or actually she is going to different realities, until she discovers the truth about who killed her parents. That's all I'm saying about the story by the way, because I don't want to spoil any of it for you guys. I mean it when I say this story is pretty good. Now, I know it's going to come up in the comments, so I'll say it here. Yes, Franbo's story is very similar to American McGee's Alice games in terms of story and themes of mental illness with grief in there as well. Many have also criticized the game for losing focus of what it wants to be about halfway through in trying to be wacky and weird for the sake of it rather than being something actually thematic. It's not quite a little nightmare situation where there are so little pieces in what's going on in the story that it's honestly frustrating, but I can understand that some people may find this game not to be so great about halfway through. Now, many have pieced the game together and there are some really great videos online going in-depth explanations of the story that do explain the derailing events that people speak of. But I personally don't find much of an issue with it. Though keep in mind that I do really love the game's story, so maybe I am biased or maybe I just don't see much of a flaw in the halfway point the way a lot of other reviewers and people I know do. 
Overall, I personally find the game's story to be absolutely incredible, though just remember that this is a very open to interpretation story, so you may love what it does and don't mind the flaws, or you may find the game lacks about halfway through. The game is a point-and-click adventure, and normally I hate point-and-click adventures because I always find the mechanics involving checking for something absolutely ridiculous like a piece of ham in a perfume bottle in the corner of the room or something like that. However, Franbo isn't like that. Sometimes things are super easy, like someone in passing say that they're gonna give coffee to the security guard. So it springs in your head to go and splash hot coffee on the security guard to get him to go away so you can get the key. Now the most important part of the game is solving puzzles with these red pills Fran takes called Duotine. These pills give her further hallucinations that are always dark and blood but serve a different layout with different pieces of the puzzle to solve. Sometimes they even show reality, like in Chapter 2, where Fran is in a house, but when she takes the pills, she's suddenly in a well now. This was just a really cool mechanic. Taking the pills also results in whispering noises and a loud screech that notifies you that you press the pill button. While the first time in every chapter is cool, after a while, I did wish the transitions were a little faster. After the first time you take it, in in a new chapter, though I understand as the game does need to notify you through the sound and visual design that you are hallucinating or seeing reality, whatever the pills do. Oh yeah, fuck this sliding block puzzle by the way. I hate sliding block puzzles so much and every time I've had to do this puzzle I've had to look up a tutorial for it because I just can't figure it out. Oh my gosh. Every time you finish a chapter, the game also has an adorable minigame to play as a break in between the horror. The minigames are done in a completely different art style compared to the rest of the game. My personal favorite minigame was the one with the toad in chapter 2. I really love stop motion, especially when it's used in ambitious projects like Hylix. So this is just really cool and I really loved the art style for it, even if it was just a frogger clone. Though if you don't like the minigames, you are completely allowed to skip them like I did here because I sucked at this part because I kept falling down a gosh damn hole so I gave up. Overall the gameplay is fun. Sometimes it can be a little too easy while other times do require you to think a smidge more but I think it's a good balance and the puzzles are really creative too. The mini games are fun and I think the gameplay as a whole balances perfectly with the story for this game as well. liked the art style. It reminds me a lot of David Firth, the creator of Salad Fingers. It's a style I really enjoy, but I am a little disappointed the resolution for this game isn't very high because the game has this incredible detailing and shading that I'd love to see, but I often find it's too pixelated or blurry to really notice the details. Though I do get this was a very small team who made this game, so maybe they could only do a small resolution as doing a huge version of the artwork would have probably taken a really long time. Sometimes proportions aren't that great too. It's not noticeable when Fran meets fantastical creatures or children her age, but when she meets adults and she's fucking huge while the adults look tiny with more realistic proportions, it comes off very, well, off. Though I will say the gore in this game is insanely designed that it's kind of cool. Even if a lot of the gore revolves around eyeballs, dead animals, stitched together twins, or dead babies slash fetuses. Though there's only so much you can do with gore anyway without repeating the same horror, speaking from personal experience as someone who's a fan of the horror genre anyway. Overall, the art style is really good, but I do wish it was slightly more to scale and the art in general was a higher quality so I can see it a little bit better. Take 
Coraline, Alice in Wonderland, and literally any episode of Seventh Fingers, and BAM! You have Fran Bo after that really weird combination. Yes, it has the metaphors in a similar sense to Alice in Wonderland, a guiding talking cat with puzzle solving like Coraline, and the confusion with possible clever storytelling of Salad Fingers. Yes, it's not a perfect game, it has flaws in the gameplay sometimes being too easy, and the story could take a direction where it might lose sight in what it's trying to say, but I think Franbo is still an amazing game. I highly recommend people play it for those who can actually play it. It's still truly an amazing game that I think a lot of people will have a blast with it. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! And if any old or new subs would like to help support the channel in any way, then feel free to visit my Ko-fi page down below in the description, along with my social media tabs. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe want to talk about anime or something, then I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!